Okay, hey everybody, it's Brett. Uh, welcome to this week's Crypto Mastery class. And uh, we're going to go through the markets uh, pretty quiet today, actually. So um, and people are still logging in to say hello to a couple of people. We've got Rennie, Lisa, David, Alex, Leslie. So uh, yeah, in the uh, heat map here, if I turn off the or turn on the zero movers, anything under 1%, um, that which is most like Ethereum, Bitcoin, uh, everything's everything's quiet ahead of the FOMC meeting tomorrow, obviously, even though it's priced in a quarter basis points and that's the most likely uh, scenario. But if we turn these off, we've got some things moving, but not a whole lot. We've got uh, Avalanche uh, up 1.83%, Dogecoin up a little bit. We could pull up a chart of the Dogecoin just because everything else is uh, super slow. And let's see, we've got a one hour, four hour. Not sure why it's pushing higher. Maybe we can pull up a daily on that let's see why did it pull up a uh, double wide let's go to a daily chart see what's going on with doge see if there's any news and uh see go to the daily chart and if you guys have any questions let me know huh interesting so Doge chart looks pretty good actually why is it pumping hard why how high can it go we can we can look at that. Why is Dogecoin up today? So news is speculate that it's addition to Twitter's rebranded. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. He uh, read something about that. So Twitter is now X. If you hadn't heard, uh, Elon decided to change the name of, um, you know, no big deal. Just change the name of a 40 billion, $44 billion corporation that uh, he just bought. Uh, so, but uh, some speculation that he's going to incorporate Dogecoin as a payment rails and um, I don't know about that. I mean, wouldn't it make more sense for them to create their own? Probably in the short term, though, currently he could uh, add that. He's, so X is going to be the everything app, as he's been saying. And I was watching the interview yesterday. He's kind of saying that it could become the financial rails of the uh, of the financial, um, you know, everything, basically. And um, but I don't know if that's a good idea, to be honest. I think, you know, you should be known for one thing not everything really he's trying to be what china is doing with wechat and wechat basically is an everything app and um yeah let's see i wonder yeah if he's going to enlarge the 140 character messaging maybe this is partially in response to the uh you know the feud between him and zuckerberg about them opening up spaces which is kind of like twitter so now he's basically saying all right gloves are off well we're going to uh, go into your area too and compete with you guys as well uh, let's see i don't know why that switched over there but let's just unpack this a little bit more and, and prompted analysts believe that the billionaire entrepreneur would add doge payment option on x yeah certainly could be a payment option uh may not be the only one so but uh doge bears liquidated let's look at the chart here uh, we can unpack where this thing is probably going to go and since nothing else is really moving, let's have a look at uh, Dogecoin here and look at the indicators. So uh, we have a fresh bell on our trend indicator. That's generally good. We've got TSI signal or both green. But the most bullish thing that I like about this is the moving averages crossing up here over and above the 21 and 50 coming up. The 21 and 50 day exponential moving averages here, the orange and green line kind of pushing higher and above the 100 day moving average here the 100 day sma which uh is sometimes uh, usually I, I usually like that on a weekly basis kind of is overkill i don't need the sma on this one here i'll just hide that one because it's a 21 and 50 we normally watch and uh you know we've got our radar looking greenish uh anyway oh and uh, thanks to sam by the way for reminding me there is a pro mode on the radar sam here today sam's not here today if you check this off in settings and click OK on the uh, radar. It's supposed to open up a uh, new window here. Let's see. Uh, well, this is still in beta and experimental, but um, uh, I think that um, it may not be because of this uh, seven month time frame. And um, anyway, I think it was at seven minutes or something in here where it's got to be the last time frame. Anyway, I don't want to get into it. We'll get back to you on that next time. The radar pro mode is uh, uh, is part of this here, and you can turn that on. And there's some nuances to that. So we'll, we'll talk about that in the next class because uh, I may need to reload the latest version. At any rate, Dogecoin uh, looking pretty strong here. 21 day, 50 day coming up. Let's look at a weekly chart here. So we're going to hit some resistance here uh, right in along 
this green, the 50 week moving average EMA here. So I'd say this could push up a little bit. I wouldn't really want to be looking at a doge pump until, you know, it does seem to be putting in higher lows. So as a long-term accumulation, this might be a good position if you're inclined to buy some Dogecoin, but I like to buy into strength and I'm going to set my alert right up here around 11 cents and kind of see when it gets to that point because uh, otherwise very likely to hit some resistance here and roll back over right in this zone i would say uh, so that's interesting uh let's go ahead and get out of here we can go back to the heat map and uh, if you guys have any questions go ahead and let me know in the uh, live chat here what else do we have we've got avalanche we've got lido dow uh, hearing some good things about lido let's take a look at avalanche and see What's going on here with AVAX? Um, let's see here. Avalanche is on one hour, four hour, four hour time frame looking good on the the uh, stochastics oscillator or the volatility index rather. You see this down here. Uh, Sam also showed me he was playing around with the adding this vol index on top of the TSI. So that's pretty cool. You can actually uh, do that. So we can try to drag it onto the top of each other. So uh, let's say, you know, if you're going to do this, uh, you want to change the colors, but this would allow you to put two indicators into one. I find that uh, a little confusing myself. So I like to see it. But on the four hour chart, when it's coming up above that lower 20 line, excellent time to be getting in for a pump on the underlying. So Avalanche here is uh, coming up on the four hour. I think it could have some nice upswing here. We've got the TSI green as well. And let's just uh, kind of pull it up, take a look at, uh, let's see. And dun, dun, same, 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 it's crypto like, okay. So basically the ERI is uh, is green. We've got a TSI, this is a weekly chart. I don't know, AVAX may be looking, it's, it's looks like it's in play or maybe soon. I'd wanna have a, see an alert right above the 50 day EMA right up here. I'll do it again, uh, add alert at the uh, crossing up above, let's say the $25 range, because anything below that, it's going to be risking coming back down on a uh, recycle or a retest of these, these lows and rejecting at the 50 week moving average. So it's interesting that it's um, uh, up a little bit here. And on the four hour again, the biggest thing that's bullish on this one is that vol index, but it doesn't always follow through. So I'd be leery of this. These are great when they pull back from above the 21 and 50 day EMAs to support at the 21 and 50, okay? So if you guys, if you guys get that. Uh, what else? Uh, let's see the, go back here. I, what else do else we say that was up to the Lido Dow? Let's take a look at Lido Dow. And um, then we'll pull up some other charts and really looks for some nuances on the uh, indicators and uh, certainly take a look at Bitcoin and Ethereum. So uh, on a weekly basis, you know, not a lot going on here. On the daily basis, it's up a little bit marginally. I'm um, getting a bullish ERI. Uh, the TSI is kind of in this middle zone and it's still red. So there's nothing really to see there with that. So I think uh, one of we, unless you guys have anything else you want to look at, that's about all though I see here today moving. Uh, let's uh, hop on over and take a look at our other indicators in the crypto mastery list. So certainly Bitcoin, what's going on with Bitcoin? Pulled back, as we've been saying in the uh, M3 active trader class, I did say we'd pull back around 28,000. And we have that upward trending uh, trend line here in trend zone. So we're still holding in that range. And it's getting a bit still overbought here on the weekly chart of Bitcoin. Let's see if we go to one hour, four hour, and let me just jump over to a daily with that. It's just uh, all eyes are on the Fed. The Fed, they're going to raise 25 basis points. That's 98% factored in. And it's the comments that everyone's waiting for. What is Powell and the Fed? What are they going to say as far as going forward with their, their hawkish comments? You know, right now there's about a 60% chance they'll raise again in September and again into the fall. But uh, we just have to hear what, uh, usually it's the comments that they say afterward, as you guys know, that'll send this uh, the markets up or down. So just really quiet day, not a lot to see uh, here. Uh, ETH poised to possibly push higher with a bullish ERI and the TSI turning, starting to turn. Actually, it hasn't turned yet. It's down in this lower area. So again, with our trading success checklist, if you guys remember this, you know we want to see an ERI. We want to see a TSI green and going above 20. 
and the signal line has gone from red to green as well. Those are the highlights. I like to see the uh, bell and a green line indicator ideally as well. It don't always get all those lineups, but when you have all these aligned, you can see some really positive movements, movements like we saw back in February where we did have those aligned and the market's pushed up just like we said it would. So anyway, uh, looking at the uh, checklist here, and by the way, if you guys don't have that, uh, let me know. And um, Myrene, if you're listening, uh, let's see, I just want to make sure we have an easy link to give people access to that uh, that checklist. I'm just going to message her the checklist here. And yeah, so we'll get back to you on that. Uh, and if you are watching on YouTube, uh, if you like the content, please like and uh, subscribe to this channel. And if you like the indicators, you can find out more at uh, cryptomastery.online and learn more about these these uh, indicators that are amazing that have really helped us call every market top and bottom uh, with uh, when they confirm with the TSI and this here, the ERI, highly accurate. And then this uh, average true range and the trend indicator are two more that you get included in that package. So you can learn more about that. Let's say I just closed down one tab that I need to bring back on here. So let's do that go back to our history. By the way, I'm using one tab. If you are wondering how I always have my tabs easily pulled up here, one tab is a great resource that you can get for free on a Google Chrome. And what it lets you do, <clears throat> pardon me, is it lets you um, close all your tabs, but save them. And all you have to do is I push this little one tab, all these tabs will go away. And then when I want to re open them, you just come up under display one tab and you can kind of bring these up here, all these other saved uh, tabs and uh, collections. So a uh, great time saving tip, especially for traders, if you're using TradingView. Okay, so uh, what else uh, do we want to look at here? We can take a look at uh, Solana. You know, a lot of these are coming back down on the daily, kind of getting back into that oversold territory. You know, not quite yet. Probably have another week of chop if we come back down in this zone. Really what I want to see is that uh, the Bitcoin can hold that 28K trend line. So uh, let me pull that back up one more time and redraw that so you guys can see. And essentially, you know, we're overbought on the weekly though too. So I this is this, there's a couple of trend lines at play here. If we come right down on this area around 28K, I'd want to see that hold and hopefully sort of pull back up and head higher from there. So we'd want to see this kind of a price action because if it can, if it starts to break down, into a deeper, there's this trend line down here. Well, there's a trend line confluence down here around this 25,800. So that would be another scenario where if we came down here, we'd really want to see that bounce. Some people are calling for a crash. I, um, I'm i not seeing that. And um, But let's take a look and see, you know, things can change. We typically will see the tops on the weekly up here are very foretelling on the... Um, the ERI, but we were all green on the radar here. So that's uh, bullish. If we push out the three months, not sure if that would change a bit. We just have to wait this out a little bit and see, you know, we're still green on the uh, ATR, the average true range. So this entry point right down here was good. If the ATR turns red, you know, then we might have some uh, trouble in there. One more thing that we can look at is, is the uh, Ali Ichimoku. Kind of see where we are, you know, I think, um, uh right so i still need to uh uh my my account renewed but not at the high level so the ichimoku chart we're probably up in the cloud i have to check on that where we're at with that you know we don't always pull that up let's see and i've got I'm just hitting my limit on indicators which is, which is surprising when you have uh hitting 25 on these so some of them may be hidden as well. So let me come in here. I'll just turn off some of these that I don't need. Uh, let's see. Where's the Bollinger Bands? Bollinger Bands are tightening, though. That's certainly interesting. And um, I'll just kill the volume real quick. Let's put on the Ichimoku. So, you know, one of the advantages of our indicators, by the way, is that uh, you can these substitute. I'm not sure why it's giving me an error there. I uh, I don't have that uh, the many on the uh, chart here, but may have to delete some more. I'll renew that, guys. I forgot it auto renewed monthly and didn't uh, do it at the highest level. So, um, at any rate, Bollinger Bands tightening, and that means either price move is going to go higher or lower. We want to see this uh, ideally get a nice bounce out of this, but kind of maybe seeing a little head and shoulders in here. That would be my concern on the weekly basis. So, if that were the case and this were the neckline, not a very deep head though. So if the if it were to break the neckline, I don't think it would go too much farther down. 
Uh, let me just adjust this on the Bollinger Band. We don't need that basis line in the middle because we have that 21 day EMA already. So it's overlapping a bit. Any questions, you guys? I see a couple in the chat. So let's Alex saying if it doesn't hold at 28K, what's the next retest all the way down to 21K? Um, you know, let's take a look at that, Alex, and turn off the uh, Bollinger's here. The um, it's uh, I'm going to put on the ATR off. So below this here, the chart's still a little bit messy. Let me just clean this up a bit. So basically what you're asking is if we don't hold here, where's the next support? And, um, you know, we have that all important sort of 25,300 level that we were bouncing around for a while. And uh, but if we can't break, if we can't hold here, which is 25,500. So that's the answer to your question. If we can't hold 28K, this is the next trend line that we'd want to keep an eye on. And oftentimes it's it's useful to draw these out even farther, turn off the ERI. OK, so if we take that, and extend that out, some people call these spider lines. But, you know, look at this this uh, chart let me make that a bit wider but that would be the next solid support and uh i you know i don't know i don't think we go back into the twenty thousand range there's still like a cme gap down in that area but uh you, you know these don't have to fill and they don't have to fill in any particular time just draw this so so look at this pretty strong uh support trend line here so on this weekly basis held back here i believe that was a covid crack and this is all the way back in 2017 kind of broke back through it back above acted as support here in december of 19 uh covid crash of course came down back through it came back above and then held as support back in this range briefly and then back in this range here so this is a fairly strong trend line support and that would put us right down again around this 25,000 26,000 range so that'd be my best guess you know we are due for some pullback here and uh you know if we start to break that then you know, then we've got some trouble. We have a liquidity pocket down below liquidity zone. It could come back down into this range. But, uh, you know, look, we don't, I don't see that at this point. Why is this not working here? There. Um, you know, I don't think it comes back down to retest these lows. There was a recent uh, episode with um, uh, Gareth Soloway. I know a lot of people like him. I, I've not uh, agreed with him on a number of occasions. Uh, he's He's worried it might go back down to 10K, even lower. I think he's wrong. You know, he the S and P might be in trouble. I do agree with that, but uh, there's nothing in the charts right now that would indicate that kind of uh, nastiness to go all the way down to those lows around 10K. We were looking for that back here. We weren't sure if we go down to 14K, 12.5. There is a CME gap just below 10K at 98.75. Took it off of the charts, but if we were to pull up the uh, the CME, I can show you that. Don't want to scare everybody. There's no reason to think that we'll go that low based on uh, what we're seeing here today. But uh, we should be aware of that possibility and keep it in the back of our mind. Here's that that she, uh, CME futures. So I'll go ahead and go widescreen on this. You can see that, uh, yeah, all the way back down here, I would have it circled 98.75. Between, between this sort of 9,700, oops, and uh, 9,700 and 9,970, big CME gap that's been, uh, is, has now to be filled because what do we have here? This one has been filled, so we can take that off. Uh, we have one above us that has not been filled here right around this uh, 34,000. So I do imagine, obviously, that'll get filled on the next bull run. These have been filled here because we came back down on this one, so these are no longer valid. It's just this one. This has not been retested back in that range. Uh, and this one here. So this one has, and really none others. This one filled here as it came back down. So um, let's let somebody else in. All right. So that's why I uh, I think that, um, you know, the only reason we would go back down these levels, but they don't have to fill, as I said. So, you know, if we wanted to look at some other scenarios, I just, uh, we are in, here's the bottom line, you guys. I mean, we're, the trend is your friend until it isn't. We are in an upward trending trend channel here and that's the important thing so until that breaks i want to be looking for upside and swings to the upside and if we break 32k then we're off to the races then we're clear to head higher you know that's that line in the sand that really has to break and a fairly significant support resistance area so we can see that right in there that all important 32k range see that so strong support all the way through the bull market here 
and held here, tested, 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 and then tried to hold here, broke down, became resistance. Then again, trying to break, trying to break, trying to break. So really what we want to see is we want to see these 21 and 50 week moving averages turn higher and break above that 32K area. And uh, we're watching our signals. So currently we have a bearish ERI on Bitcoin. And sorry, guys, uh, bear with me here. And uh, then uh, the TSI is going red. So we, we do have more downside from here. Again, these signals are excellent, especially on the weekly time frame for showing these weekly reversals, especially on the tops. I think the uh, I love the radar when it works with the TSI. So we so let's just talk about this for a minute. We um, this is this is a little concerning because the ERI TSI are confirming today. And this is the weekly. So you need to see how it plays out on the weekly. If we start to pull down hard because the FOMC spooks the markets and we get below the 21 and 50, yeah, I mean, you want to, we're looking at another downswing. And how deep? Well, we've seen when these align in the past, again, the power of these indicators, we have a red ERI early reversal indicator. The TSI is going red again on that weekly basis and time frame. And uh, the signal line is green to flat. So that's the concern there, because if we look at this, we had uh, we had called it called these tops very accurately when the TSI confirmed. And, and here we had a drop down and these were sizable retracements. So as and here as well. So we do want to pay attention to this, you guys. Uh, I would have your emergency stops probably in this 25,500 range because if we start losing the 21 and 50 day EMAs and 50 week EMAs, then we could see a pullback here and uh, the targets on that would be you know, probably the Fibonacci golden pocket here. Let me open this up and show you guys this, what that would look like. So from the market cycle low here around 15.5, just under 15,000 up to here, the a retracement, we could see retrace back to around 21,000. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, Alex, you nailed it. 21K would be that golden pocket and there's support resistance in this area. So uh, if uh, if we start to see that play out, this would be a good bounce zone, at least for short interim bounce. The danger of that would be that the uptrending channel is then uh, has been taken out and we'd have to kind of put in higher lows on the cycle, come back, maybe retrace and then rebuild from there. All of these things are possible. And so we want to keep that in mind. Again, that 32K area is very difficult right now for Bitcoin to get back above. All eyes are on the market. And let's see, secret pattern nobody talks about. Uh, I'm not going to open these up. There's, there's, there's no shortage. All right. Somebody's saying bearish 21K target confirmed. Uh, look at that because it coincides with what we're already saying here. And why is it not pulling up the chart? Uh, the new story. Hang on a second. Bitcoin bearish show more. Uh, why is it not opening up? Maybe because I'm on the Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin futures. Here it is. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, well, I had the Bart Simpson on the chart yesterday. <clears throat> and... Um, or was it last Friday, last last week we had Bart Simpson? Yeah, it certainly could be the Bart Simpson pattern here. And, um, you know, they've got a pretty good Bart looking Bart. Uh, where's my Bart here? Uh, Bart Simpson, here he is. I'll go grab it. We can put that on the uh, on there as well. So we'll come back over to our Bitcoin chart here and put it on the actual chart of the uh, Bitcoin, not the uh, CMEs actually, but come on now, let me get in the right area. Master list, uh, I've lost the coin list. Something went haywire here, you guys. Uh, let's see, I don't need this. Settings, BTC, CME. It's uh, taking my list away, huh? Interesting. Uh, this usually is down in this news area down in here. So let me just see. It's maybe a glitch. Well, anyway, we can put it on here if we want to. So anyway, there's Bart Simpson. Uh, on a daily basis, it's more visible. 
And anyway, you guys, that's fine. He has a better one on there. I uh, I admit defeat. He has a nicer Bart Simpson. I'll have to get a new one. Uh, good, uh, good Bart Simpson there. But yeah, this is the target. So we could come down here with a bounce and put us back down. As I was saying, the uh, golden pocket Fibonacci 0.618 right in that 21K range. Doesn't mean it has to go there. And uh, see, big, buy long Bitcoin here, the hundred thousand target. That's uh, pretty aggressive for um, short term. He's also pointing out September is an extremely bearish month. Uh, the, you know, it remains to be seen though. We usually July we get a nice bounce, and we, it looks like we're not going to get our July bounce. So all bets are off on the, when this thing could rally. And here's the thing: as as he has on here, I haven't seen this before. He's also drawn the ascending parallel channel. We're still in the ascending parallel channel. So I think it's it's 50-50 whether that holds or breaks. And so we want to keep that in mind. Until it breaks, we don't have the Bart Simpson. And uh, I mean, you can say it looks like the Bart Simpson right up in there. But uh, I'm uh, I'm more watching this, this uh, ascending triangle. And that's what I want to keep an eye on. If it breaks the ascending, the ascending parallel channel rather, then I would say we're looking at at least retracement down to 23.4. That would be the 50% and likely down to 21K. And then we put in a bottoming pattern and head higher because we, but here's the thing. We have this uh, TSI oversold. So I think that more than likely as we come down to this, the lower edge of the trend channel and break higher with the TSI. So that's what we want to watch and wait for. But it's a good time to stay out. When in doubt, stay out. And uh, I am at a loss here. What happened to my um, my uh, list here? Ah, that's what happened. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why that happened, but it was hiding them. That's what happened. All right. Uh, let's take a look at the total market cap. Important we can hold above a trillion. It is still doing that. And so, again, we've got a couple here that are up a little bit, like AVAX. Still bearish on AVAX daily under the 21 and 50-day EMA. Bearish on the ERI and TSI. And if we want to turn on our ATR, ATR is still bullish there, but not looking terribly bullish. So, how are we doing on time? Half an hour in. Uh, not a whole lot to look at, you guys. Let's see. If we jump over into our crypto mastery list again, we've got Polygon Matic. These are looking bearish here. These are rolling over. If you're looking for a good short, you know, red on the radar. And uh, we have this liquidity zone that sort of people started taking profits in there. And uh, TSI is coming down on this. You know, you'd want to see it put in a higher low. That would be a possible bounce point. If you see this, now here's a nuance if you're new. The green early reversal indicator, again, our proprietary indicators, this is only valid when the TSI, the trend strength indicator, turns up from red to green. Okay, and uh, let's see. Uh, I was asking for a, yeah, the team is in the Philippines and they're having a typhoon right now. So I uh, may not be getting as fast response on those, but if you do, it would like to learn more about these indicators, you can go to uh, cryptomastery.online if you're watching the YouTube channel. And uh, these are excellent. These are the best I've used in 20 years of trading. We've designed them to be that way, but just uh, absolutely nailing these market turns, as you can see uh, in the uh, areas here, green arrows all the way up capturing 527% gains on the way up and 124% gains in these red arrows calling the mini market tops, which we potentially are seeing coming into play here right now with that uh, red uh, bearish ERI and TSI on that weekly time frame. So we want to keep an eye on that weekly time frame is excellent for that. Now let's see, why is it, uh, it was showing it on the CME, but uh, it's not showing it on the regular Bitcoin chart. So an interesting is ETH is all green on the radar. So it's not as bearish as everyone thinks. I'm I'm sort of strangely neutral right here. And you know, the the, the FOMC has been priced in the quarter point raise. So I don't think that uh, we have a big dump tomorrow unless they really kind of come in and say, yeah, we need to clamp down on this economy. Inflation is still out of control and spook the market. That's certainly possible. But these are bearish setups until they get above the 21 and 50 day EMAs. Like we've been saying, um, I'm not I'm not really bullish on these. Now, the radar is green, but that's not enough. Uh, you want to use your uh, crypto trading success list here. And go with these top four. These when these line up, if you get three out of the top four here, it's good to go on a bullish trade. 
in my experience. So ERI green and showing an up arrow and, and the TSI green and above the 20 line. So again, it has to get above that 20 line. And like this one, this one still in that oversold range on the 20 line, not a bullish, not a check mark. It has to be above that 20 line. And uh, then the signal line has a signal gone from red to green. These are my top four. That's when I want to get into a trade. And then we get into the trend indicator, key in a bell, and the midline is green. It doesn't always turn green. So that, if it's not green, that's a red flag. And then there's other patterns like bullish engulfing candles and uh, EMA support and trend line support and the volatility index, which you guys get access to and have access to as well. All right. Oh, uh, let's see. So Polygon Matic, not a whole lot to see here. It is hitting some trend line support on that. Uh, bearish ERI on this weekly candle with Matic, but it's already oversold here. I don't know. You know, this is one of those we just have to wait and see. Uh, what else do we have? We were looking at Stellar Lumens last week. Stellar Lumens back up above its weekly 21 day and 50 day EMA. So that's relatively bullish here. And uh, let's take a look at the daily chart. Mm, overbought on the TSI. So definitely want to be watching this. When you see this, the TSI overbought territory turning from green over to red and heading down. And when it breaks that 80 line, also bearish signal. So, you know, look, when in doubt, stay out. There's not a whole lot to going on here in these markets, as we were saying. And uh, let's see, I got a message here. Okay. Uh, let's see, can you create a short URL that's easy to post? Remember, okay, now I was just telling you guys, um, or Myrene is sending me a link for the trading success worksheet if you guys don't have that yet. Uh, if you don't have that, let me know in the chat here. If you're on the live, live stream, then uh, we'll get that to you. All right, so um, yeah, let's take a look at, let's see, Bitcoin here on the one hour, four hour. Had a bit of a drop here, obviously, the last couple of days going into the FOMC. I guess what we should do, we haven't done today, is to look at some Bitcoin news and just see what's going on. The halving is, you know, the halving is coming up April next year. Bitcoin price outlook, BlackRock ETF could rally up to 180,000. Yeah, you know, I think that's valid, 105,000 up to, say, 200,000 in the next market cycle. And uh, But not a lot happening here, Bitcoin news. Uh, the CNBC Bitcoin is falling sharply ahead of the FOMC meeting. Uh, let's see. Uh, they think Standard Charter predicts Bitcoin could fall to 5,000 in 2023. You know, I'm surprised to hear that. That's That doesn't sound right to me. We've got a lot of retail buying right now, and institutions don't want to be late to the party. So let's see what's going on here on Coindesk and Cointelegraph. And of course, uh, our good friends over at Markets Pro have a good aggregator of news, so we can hop over into this. We're going to be actually featuring that next week, so watch your emails and look for that uh, class. We're going to show you uh, how to get uh, inside and how to use this Markets Pro from Cointelegraph. Big price movers here. We've got some. Uh, none of these are familiar. Rook I've heard of, but not much. None that I really want to look at. Mostly I want to look at the news. Solana game developer automating uh, announces mass layoffs. Top trending Fed predicted to impose heaviest burden in your on your wallet in 22 years. All right, probably should read that. And ZK Sync's largest lender struck by 3.4 million exploit. Okay, well, uh, there's all kinds of new things coming out. ZK Snarks, ZK, what is this one? ZK Sync's. We'll leave that alone for now. And um, Latest news to see if there's anything else. Yeah, Joe Rowan Powell, uh, Powell be hawkish or dovish. How these ETFs could react to, let's take a look at that in the news. And nothing else here. Ar Arbitrum enlisted as Web3 Gamer pursues multi-million chain aspirations. That that could be interesting for one of our other programs here. But uh, yeah, so Fed Powell signaling may not give up optionality of rate hikes to lower inflation. So you know, they, they're likely not done yet. They've got more coming. And um, yeah, so let's take a look at some of these, see what's going on with these uh, in the news. Bitcoin could sort 180K before April 2024. Having uh, before the having, I don't know about before the having, it's got a long way to go to get to 180K before April. 
uh, now. Now, that being said, we do have a scenario. For those of you in the M3 trader class, I have, well, we have a scenario in those charts here in our Moonstream M3 crypto and our advanced classes tomorrow, where I have the 100K scenario by the end of the year. And uh, that would include, actually, I'm going to bring it up because that is on my list of uh, things that could trigger the 100K Bitcoin. And that would be that BlackRock ETF, among a few other things. So I'll uh, pull those up for you guys. And just bear with me here because I've got it right here for you. This is why I use one tab. Uh, so here's the path to Bitcoin 100K. And um, as soon as that loads, we can, we can take a look at that. It certainly uh, would, would be a number of factors could lead toward that. This is the version I put on TradingView. And since then, it has pulled back, as I suggested, but it has yet to go higher. So it's breaking from this fractal pattern that I thought could be the catalyst, which would be hyperinflation, de-dollarization, QE money printing, and pay down the debt, bank failures, bank runs, et cetera. But the, the newer version is this one where I did add it. Look at that. I added that BlackRock and Fidelity ETFs. So uh, we can put away the indicators here for a moment and just see. So... This was, a, again, a fractal pattern of when it did go higher back in this 2020 range. So to get to 100K, why are these levels on here? For me, with the market cycle high to the market cycle low, that is to get to 100K, actually uh, just over 100K is that 1.618 bounce. A 2.618 bounce takes us to 155K and a 3.618 to 210K. So, um, but that, I think that's going to require, if that's going to happen, it's going to require some uh, big pushes by these ETFs. So with that in mind, I'll um, go ahead and put this all away with my one tab there. Uh, hit save and not affiliated with these guys, just like the uh, platform for uh, saving your tabs. So that that's what they're saying here is, uh, as I've had on there for, for weeks now, price of Bitcoin could soar up because of the having and the ETF from BlackRock could drive a boost in daily demand. Yes. And, uh, you know, if the SEC approves the ETF from BlackRock, likely they'll have to approve Fidelity and some of these other ones like GBTC, which is suing the SEC. It's hard for them to approve one and not the other. And, uh, but you know, the big, the big elephant in the room is BlackRock. If that gets approved or when it does, we're going to see some serious fireworks, but to go 521%, took from current levels to 180K by April. I don't know. I don't know about that. Uh, I see Pinocchio's nose is growing there. It's um, that That's quite a lot of, uh, I mean, that, that's unrealistic, I think. So um, let's see, a Bitcoin ETF could add 100 million in incremental daily demand for Bitcoin. Yeah, I mean, it certainly would be a huge overnight pump. I just, from 30,000 to 180K, you know, we could get to 100K, as I was saying, but uh, at any rate, let's keep going with that. And so the having coming up, uh, that's all news. So we've got all that in fact. So basically, what else? Uh, cryptos investors sour on Bitcoin funds after massive inflows turn instead to Ether and XRP. That's interesting. So uh, Bitcoin investment products suffered a $13 million outflow last week, bucking the trend of conservative weeks, massive inflows, and people putting money in ETH and Ripple. So, you know, um, doesn't mean they stay in ETH and Ripple. The, I think Ripple pushes up and then has a bit of a sell-off, but the they had a partial victory. And even though they, it doesn't sound like the SEC is going to appeal. I mean, overall, it is a victory, but um Let's see, look at, let's look at this. ETH-focused investment products enjoy the largest inflows of all crypto, totaling 6.6 .6 million. So that's great. Suggesting that the sentiment, which has been poor all year, is beginning to turn around for the second largest crypto assets are saying. So that uh, that's interesting. And <laughs> Elizabeth Warren and the mysticism of the crypto skeptics. I uh, don't need to dive into this, but uh, we've got some uh, yeah, the XRP army diving in too. So all of this kind of helps lead toward, you know, more mass adoption and prices pushing higher. Funds with smaller holdings like Solana, Uniswap, Matic, some of our picks from 2021 saw positive inflows of 1.1 million and, um, you know, beats a sharp stick in the eye. It's happening. It's slowly up until the right money's coming back into this market. So uh, what is this all about? This is a, a article about Bitcoin. We don't need to unpack that. It's about Satoshi. 
you guys can google it uh alex uh alex anyone who want to take this bet alex is betting a million the bitcoin goes to a million what's your time frame alex uh you know if you're like uh Balaji from uh, from Coinbase, who bet it would go to a million by he lost that bet. By the way, he bet it would go to a million by summer. He lost uh, he lost that bet. But um, yeah, I know it's a joke, Alex. <laughs> so anyway, let's keep going on uh, the rest of the news here. Mm, allow ads, Fox Business. I don't want to allow ads in Fox Business, but I'll do it for you guys. I just turned off my ad blocker. So Fed set to raise her interest rates to 22 year high after the June pause. Yeah, so it's um, why well, I expect to deliver the rate hike Wednesday projected quarter point rate hike would set Fed funds between 5.25 and 5.5 further restricting economic activity as the borrowing cost for homes, cars, other items much higher. And the 11th increase, wow, in nearly a year and a half. I mean, this is significant. And um, certainly this recession is not over yet. Some people are saying that there's not going to be a recession. We'll have a soft landing. Uh, I'm hearing a lot on the other side of that is that it lands next year. So it hasn't been likely factored in yet. Fed funds rate projected to come down when the target rate is projected to come down in 2024. At some point, they will ease. They have to start reversing it. And that will... That will be a huge catalyst in the markets and money into risk on assets. So, and as we talked about, the real importance of the Fed meeting is what is said at the statement and press conference after the meeting. And that's what everyone's waiting for. And that's why these markets aren't really moving. Okay, so um, we'll keep an eye on that. And certainly uh, we'll be going uh, over that stuff tomorrow in the M3 Active Trader class. If you'd like more information about that, that is moonstream.io slash M3. And you can learn more about the M3 program, which is uh, some, some availability right now. And um, all right, so we, what were we looking at? Not that, we were not that, not that. We were looking at news. Sorry about that. Uh, will Jerome Powell be hawkish or dovish? How these five ETFs could react to the Fed's rate decision. And uh, obviously, if they're, um, you know, hawkish and they want to continue bringing rates up, uh, bad for markets. If they're dovish and they starting to hint they might start easing off on the gas pedal, lowering rates, then those will go higher. But growth stocks, tech communication, all of this vulnerable to Fed aggressive in continued rate hikes. All of you guys probably know this. And um, so, yeah, so a more hawkish attitude from Powell, this is what everyone's worried about may reaffirm the need for more rate hikes during this news conference, which would catch the markets off guard. We could see a market dump and a bit of a retracement correction. Let's see, five major ETFs likely to see significant activity and shifts. Uh, as of tomorrow, we've got the Invesco, USD, mm, iShares. This is all like more stock side spiders, iShares, ProShares. Don't need to get into that either. All right, well, uh, with that, you guys, um, Let's see, we're back to the uh, Pro Coin Telegraph. They had this cool thing called the Vortex score, by the way, where it'll score coins based on some criteria. And so Coin98, I'm not familiar with here. We're going to have a whole new slew of these to remember in the next bull run. Always happens, a whole bunch of new coins you got to keep an eye on. But uh, Coin98, let's see if we can find any information on that. 80 vortex score we're going to be doing a live presentation on this platform next week because i'm not uh, able to talk about it intelligently just yet otherwise i would but a higher vortex score seems to be better let's see if i can find what coin 98 is or does in here and we'll pull up our own chart and uh so i this looks terrible to me <laughs> so well we have a bullish eri tsi is red uh, you know, do you want to put it on your radar potentially, but I would do it with an alert above support zone up in here. And I might be running out of alerts here at this point, but at any rate, uh, so that's all there is to this class. You guys We made good time today. Uh, anything you guys want to look at. And um, by the way, uh, here is if you want that checklist, just go to moonstream.io slash trading checklist. Okay, and uh, you can get that uh, here. I thought we had a page of, of um, anyway, so you can get it directly.
Okay, so you can get that there. Uh, and um, get your copy there without even an opt-in or anything. So, um, all right. Well, I don't see any comments, you guys. Again, uh, so if you're still watching, quiet day in the markets here. Not a whole lot going on. We could sometimes we go into crypto pairs screener, but I don't think there's much to see here today. And um, because the markets, like I said, we're waiting for this Fed announcement. So, so uh, you're just scrolling through here, not seeing anything kind of worth pulling up at this point. So we'll put that away. And uh, again, so just to talk about it a little bit, if you'd like to learn more about crypto and how to trade these markets better, these indicators are amazing. You can get started for a free month and 30 days free. Just go to cryptomastery.online. And uh, you can go right there and uh, might even work with cryptomastery.org. We were having some problems with that and I might have to sort that out. Let's see if it works. Oops, if I could spell it right. And uh, that could work as well. Uh, but no. All right. Cryptomastery.online will do it. Actually, I'm doing it in the wrong area. So that's that. It'll redirect you a little bit. Uh, there's some various order options. Uh, that yeah, that one's not working. Okay, and then the other one for more advanced training in our M3 crypto course, which includes the indicators. It's weekly live classes with me on Wednesdays as well. A little more in depth look at the markets, more advanced TA, how to use these markets. Been trading for 20 years, and uh, part of you, many of you are in our live M3 group, so we we have 24 access to me and the Signal chat. Lots of other things in here you can learn about at Moonstream.io/m3. Checklist patterns, high probability cheat sheets, etc. Portfolio tracker, trading patterns, all of these things. So uh, with that, you guys, um, let's see. Yeah, you're welcome, Leslie. So yeah, use that checklist. Works well with the these indicators here. Again, the best we've used. And uh, you can see, read what other people are saying here on the bottom here, uh, where you can uh, some existing and past users that have use these indicators with great success here on uh, the uh, page, either one of those pages. Uh, so cryptomastery.online for the indicators or moonstream.io slash M3, which includes the indicators and a whole bunch of other bonuses and live classes and trainings, which you can read about down here. So uh, with that, everybody, um, if you're still watching here, I'm going to wish you guys a good day. Uh, we could stay on, but there's nothing really to look at at this point. We'll see what happens tomorrow. You know, be careful, have your stops losses set, you know, and or be looking to dollar cost average down at those lower levels like we talked about. But ideally, you're waking, waiting for uh, our indicators to confirm and retrace to the point where it's time to buy back in again.